All right, I wanted to do a video about uh, some of my mopeds since uh, apparently some people don't understand how this works. This is the newest one that I've built. Um, you can see a video on that one. That's the mongoose moped. If you want to see any videos on that, I got a whole video. Now, this was actually the first one that I built. Yeah, I built this one out of necessity. I've taken it apart and cannibalized it for parts. I used to have a gas tank that was just that mounted to the uh, engine neck, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the seat neck there. But anyway, how this works is you get, uh, I don't know what I did with the one that I had, but you see the peg there, the bicycle peg? You mount that onto the drive of your engine. So this is the way you do it yourself if you, if you're, if you want but that peg then rides the tire and you put tension on it with uh springs let me get it in the shot here where the heck is it there it is you would hook that spring to one of these um clasps that i put there you can get more springs for more tension the more tension you have the better power um however this is the drawback of the friction drive the friction drive if the back tire gets really wet and you don't have a lot of tension it's not gonna push the tire as much this one was a lot simpler this one was basically you pedaled and it just started you didn't have to pull start it or anything you just pedaled to start and when you braked it shut down all you had to do to start it up was just start pedaling it and the engine would kick itself over and it would go the only drawback to these ones is that if you don't have it set upright, it can eat the back tire. This one is actually fine. As you can see, this one I drove for miles and miles. You can see, see this tire still survived. There's lots of uh, meat left on it. Um, so that was my first one. And this mounts on a swing arm here. I think you can see that there, that this mounts on an arm that I uh, bolted through there but that's how this one worked and that's the basis of a friction drive they've been around forever you know i didn't invent friction drive but anyway because uh, i liked this one because number one i had built it myself that's not the original engine that i had on here the original one had blown up and i tried replacing it and it just the new engine just didn't fit the same way and i just abandoned the project and i that's why i ended up cannibalizing it for parts because I was going to build one that was chain driven. So this is a chain driven kit that I uh, bought. Now this thing never ever ever worked right. And this is why I don't like the chain driven kits. Because uh, the chain driven, you these tensioner, this tensioner always gave me problems. The chain was always coming off of the gear. This has to be really well aligned, which it is. It's just every little thing affects these. So I was just constantly throwing the chain and links were popping out of the chain. So to ride this one, you literally had to have practically a toolkit with you because that's how often it would throw the chain. And this one also had a clutch and everything else. So, you know, you were talking about it was a little, uh, it wasn't the simplest way to start. You would have to start pedaling and then after you pedaled, you would throw the clutch and that would kick over the engine. Uh, it was just a nightmare. I, I just didn't like this. It never worked right. Um, and it never had really the, that much power. Maybe that's because it wasn't set up right. But I never really got this one to go, I don't think, ever above 20 miles an hour. Whereas this one I got to go about 25 miles an hour. So that's why I bought this kit, which was a friction drive kit. Now... The bicycle peg that I had on this one to drive it, as you can see, it was it was the same exact one as here. It was just I took the one that was off of this side. I don't know where I put it, but anyway. Uh, this is smooth, as you can see, relatively smooth. I mean, it's got a little bit of uh, grit there, of grip, but it's relatively smooth. Which is probably why it never ate that back tire that much. But as you can see... The drive on this one has uh, has like teeth in it. I'm sure you can see that. So that was eating up a reg the regular mountain bike tire. The one that came on here, those little nubs, it just absolutely ate it up. 
that's why I switched over to this uh, more of like a racing slick tire in the back and that really solved the problem so with this kind of drive you want for the drive tire something that really doesn't have any nubs on it they do make a combination tire that's like a racing tire in the middle but it has the nubs on the outside like a mountain bike that would be good they just didn't have one when i went to go and buy this one this is the best thing that they had also the other thing you want to look for is when you're choosing a back tire for this kind uh, for a friction drive is you want to make sure that the rubber is a stiff rubber the real floppy paper thin rubber that will just get absolutely destroyed by a friction drive so basically the drawbacks of this is you can eat tires but i think it's a lot easier to change a tire because i could do that in about five minutes it's a lot easier for it to change a tire than to constantly have to fiddle with the alignment on this and this one also this is a pull start as well this is all also why this one is neat pull start and the engine doesn't engage doesn't engage until you start giving it gas the engine runs but there's a uh, centrifugal clutch on there so it doesn't start going until you uh give it gas so this one i like a lot better okay so now that we've covered how they work because once again you know i heard through the grapevine that some people uh don't understand how this works or didn't think it would work something to that effect and like i said it's not like i invented the friction drive they've been around since kids have been putting uh motors onto bikes or engines onto bikes uh is actually the more proper term but anyway okay so now we're covering legality okay you technically cannot just strap an engine to a bike and take it on the street it doesn't matter you they, technically you can't drive the on the road however if the there's several regulations the engine has to be under 50 something cc and which this one is it's a 49 cc engine so it's uh it's uh, under the the size the other regulation is it has to have a hundred foot pounds of braking power and it has to have a horn so mine doesn't mine meets all these requirements except that i don't have a horn so what i would have to do is i would have to basically go to notary public tell them i built this moped out of such and such parts the, but the frame already has a serial number so that's what you would use basically as your vin number you would take get a, a letter from the notary public uh, or bring a letter to the notary public and get them to notarize it saying i built this out of such and such parts the vin number is going to be the same as the frame number then you have to take that to the dmv and get it registered and everything just like you would a car except it's extraordinarily cheap because it's a bicycle and you have to have a valid driver's license your regular driver's license will cover a moped uh you can if you're you know uh underage you can get a moped license uh but of course you know to get your moped license you still have to basically meet all the same requirements for a driver's license you know you can't have any uh stuff on your record or you can't be revoked or anything like that um but then after you do all that you are allowed to take this uh one of these on the road so i just wanted to make a short video covering the different kinds there's also there is one other there's these are the basic two kinds of mopeds you can also find belt driven ones however you don't see those as often normally those are completely homemade projects but mainly out of the kits or homemade if you're talking homemade a lot of times you're gonna find friction drive because it's the easiest and as i said maintenance is a lot easier than chain driven and the other kind you're going to find is of course the chain driven which a lot of times those are going to be kits too but they can be uh homemade too i've i've seen people make homemade chain driven ones as well those are the two basic uh kinds and they do work great 
uh, like I said, that one, I think the top speed I ever got was like 24, I think was about what it got. That one, as I said, I don't think I ever got over 15 on that one just because it was so finicky and the chain was always throwing and everything. So this one I've gotten downhill up to 35 miles an hour. And this has, even in wet weather, I put a lot of tension on that, uh, on that back tire because I like having the extra power. If you put a little less tension, you might get a little bit more out of the top end, but you'd really have to like feather the, uh, feather the, uh, what you call it, the accelerator, because otherwise it'll uh, slip too much. So I like it with a lot of tension on it. Uh, it's really, it's up to you. But of course, the more slippage, the more you're going to eat the tire. Because basically what you want, the, the goal is you want the tire to get rolled by the, uh, by the drive. You don't want it to, you know, be spinning against the tire to get it spinning. So really, the best way for the life of your tire is to make sure that there's uh, a lot of tension and it gives you good power and also it's a moped i mean going 20 25 miles an hour on this is fast enough and also that's the other thing speaking of legality you're not allowed to drive these over 25 miles an hour mopeds are legally not allowed to be driven over they can go over 25 yes but it doesn't matter what the speed limit is, you're not allowed to drive these over 25 miles an hour. So that's the other thing, which is also why I installed a speedometer. Of course, I was doing uh, speed tests through a park, which hasn't been opened yet, so there was no risk of uh, hitting anybody or anything like that. So that's where I did my speed test. But uh, around here, there's no local police, and I'm not really, I'm not causing a disturbance you know most of the time they'll probably be pretty pretty lenient on you i mean of course i i have nothing on my record it's completely clean so you know i'm just doing it for sport i'm not causing a ruckus and i'm or a scene or anything else it's just something for my own entertainment so hopefully they'll be they'd be understanding of that if somebody did want to harass you but basically as long as you're not terrorizing your neighbors it's probably fine but I would always recommend going and doing these as legally as possible because uh, otherwise, what's the point? You know, if you build it and you can't drive it anywhere, then why have it? So anyway, that's just a little update on the different kinds of mopeds.